SE4. We're going to assume the data with regard to the inventory of Cassiato Company. Starting on August 1st, they have an inventory balance of 40 units at $10 per unit. On page 314, we purchased inventory on August 8th, 50 units at $11. And on August 22nd, inventory was purchased of 35 units at $12. It gives us uh, um, goods available for sale, the number of units of 125, and the value of those units is 1,370. Um, on August 15th, we sold 45 units, and August 28th, we sold um, another 25 units, and that gives us an ending inventory value, uh, uh, ending inventory units of 55 units. First, tr first transaction we're going to do is a specific identification. And in the specific identification, they're telling you exactly what units you sold from what dates. Okay? So we're saying that we sold 30 units from the August um, 8th purchase. So the August 8th purchase was at 50 was at $11 per unit. So we're going to do, in this one we're going to do, inventory consists of 30 units from the August 8th purchase, and we purchased them at $11 per unit, and 25 units from the August 22nd purchase at $12. So our cost of goods sold in this particular problem, it said it was thirteen hundred and seventy, right? So now we've got to calculate our ending inventory. It's thirteen hundred and seventy dollars. So we've got three thirty times eleven is three hundred thirty dollars. And then 25 times 12 is $300. So the total here is 630 And is this my ending inventory or is my cost of goods sold? Sorry. I'm not very neat. It's $300. Um, so what is that? Is that my ending inventory or my cost of goods sold? It's my ending inventory. So I'm going to take this away, and it's going to give me my cost of goods sold of $740. Okay? So you've got to know whether you're factoring in here the, the inventory, or are we doing what we did on the board, which is figure out the cost of goods sold. In this case, we're doing the ending inventory. Okay? Let's look at the average unit cost method. Um... So in this case, again, we're using, in the average cost method, we're again still using that 1370 for our goods available for sale. That doesn't change. Okay, that doesn't change. What we're going to do here, in this case, is what are we going to divide this by to get our unit cost? What are we going to divide this by to get our unit cost? What did I say we were going to do? Look in your notes. Or look back on the pages 300 in your textbook. Look at page 300 in your textbook. Good, Rachel. Turn the page. Look. Page 300. Danny, go ahead. Page, look, look at page 300. What are you going to divide it by? Good. How many units do I have for avail available for sale? Say what? 125. So what is that? 1370 divided by 125 gives me a unit cost of $10.96. Am I done? Negative. What do I have to take and apply that to?
either the cost of goods sold or the ending inventory, right? Okay. So, because if I'm going to try to figure out my value of my ending inventory, let's do, let's do the ending inventory. So, how many units do I have in ending inventory? No, that's the amount I have available for sale. 55. So, 55. I'm going to multiply that times $10.96. Okay. It's going to give me, let's round up, $603. Don't you have to round up $10? Um, no, you're not doing this one for homework. You're doing, um, you're doing uh, turnover periods for homework. So my 1370 minus my 603, it gives me a cost of goods sold of 767. But you guys, I'm going to guess you're going to have a homework problem just like this next class to do over the weekend. So it probably would behoove you to make sure you pay attention. You have a week to do a problem. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. FIFO. FIFO method. Again, we have that same 1,370 units. And now, under the FIFO method, we're going to value our ending inventory. FIFO says our cost of goods sold is first in, first out. What's our ending inventory going to be made up of? FIFO says first items in or first items out. What's our ending inventory going to be made up of? Is it going to be the first items or the last items? Last. Good. Okay. If, if, if I'm operating under FIFO, my ending inventory is going to be my last items purchased. Okay. How many units do I have to get up to for my ending inventory? Same 55, same 55 units, same 55 units, okay? Just going to pick different ones. So I'm going to go from my last items purchased on the 22nd, okay? Because that's what they tell us in the problem. They say that our ending inventory is 55 units, okay? So, good question. Okay, so I'm going to go with 35 units. At how much are those 35 units at? It's Thank you. Thank you. $12. So 35 units at 12. And now I, I still have, what's 55 less 35? 20. So I still have 20 more units that I have to account for. So I'm going to take 20 units from the August 8th purchase at... $11 per unit. So 35 at 12 is going to be 420. And 20 at, am I doing that right? It's 220. Oops. 220. Total those up. I've got 640 is the value. So to get my co cost of goods sold, it's going to be my 1370 minus my 640. So the value of my cost of goods sold is 730. SE seven. I'm going to look at la last in, first out. So the cost of goods sold is going to be under LIFO. Is the last items in or the first items out? So my ending inventory is going to be based on the first items purchased. I would write down for 55 units. I would write that little note down in both of those, okay, because my, my ending inventory is going to be based on the first items purchased. So I've got to get up to 55 units, and I start with the first items purchased. So I've got inventory on August 1st. Of 40 items, 40 items times $10 per item equals 400. And then I've got to get from 40 to 55, I've got 15 more units 
And that's going to be from the August 8th purchase at $11 per unit. Hundred sixty five. So that's going to be five hundred sixty five dollars. I take, oops, my bad. The thirteen seventy again minus the five sixty five, and I get the value of my cost of goods sold is eight oh five. Okay, so you can kind of see under these four different approaches. I have four different values for my cost of goods sold and four different inventory values. That affects both your profitability and your balance sheet, okay? All right. So, you guys, the homework is just going to be SE2 and SE3. I'll put it up in Aplia.